this video, I'm going to show you five tips for editing your book in Google Docs. A few of these are a little bit of personal preference, but I really hope that this will help inspire you to find your own workflow in Google Docs. My first tip is going to be to use color. Now this is for those of us who are more visual and like to see color in spreadsheets and color on lists and color in books. So what I'm going to show you is this is my draft of my third book and I left the color in there because I think it's cool. So this chapter 13 has a whole bunch of different colors. Usually when I'm editing, I just like to do the scenes or the sentences and paragraphs that I add in purple, just so I can sort of visually see what was new and what was different. But for this chapter, you can see I have a bunch of different colors. And I did this because this was an entire chapter that I added that wasn't in the original version. And each of these is actually a writing sprint. And this is uh, an extra tip for writing, is if you do it in colors, it's kind of more motivating to see, wow, I did all of this like in one go. And then I'm gonna go to chapter seven, just so you can see it. I don't completely go crazy with the color, but these are all of the paragraphs that I have added, um, different sentences at the end of paragraphs. I also like to do um, strike through text. And you do this by selecting what you want to strike through, go up to format text, and then strike through. If you're debating on editing or cutting something, you can do this. You can also do this if you are in editing mode. Uh, if you go over here to suggesting, and then you backspace to delete, this will also give you kind of the same effect. It does have that annoying comment there. So depending on if you want that comment there. Um, it's two different ways to kind of achieve the exact same thing. You can also use the highlighter. So this is really good if you need to maybe, if there's a character name you want to change or it's inconsistent, you spelled it two different ways, you can highlight your text. So you know exactly, you know, what you need to change as you're going through things. My editor also likes to highlight words that I've used like the same word in the sentence in the same sentence or in separate sentences in the same paragraph. It's just a way to visually tell. I also, when I can't word and I can't figure out a sentence instead of getting frustrated, I like to highlight it in a different color. And this will just let me know when I'm done with the chapter and I'm ready to take a second try at the words. I can just scroll back up to the chapter and I'll easily be able to tell where I am. You can also leave yourself a comment, but I just, visually like seeing the color. My second tip is to use a custom dictionary. This is especially helpful if you are a fantasy or a science fiction author, or you're just creating names that aren't actually names or places that don't exist. This will get rid of the annoying little red squiggly telling you that you've spelled your own word wrong, which you have not. This will just help kind of clean up your documents so you know what you need to actually focus on and what you don't. This is really easy to do. Um, I am going to add in a Japanese word, which is kuchi sabishi, which is basically um, your mouth is lonely and you want to eat. You just right click on it and then you click add to personal dictionary. And as you can see, it gives me a confirmation up here that has added it to my personal dictionary. If I made a mistake and don't want it to actually do that, I can click undo or I can hit dismiss if I like that. It is really easy to edit your personal dictionary. You can find it up in tools, spelling and grammar, and then personal dictionary. And you can see these are all of my character names and my Japanese terms that I've added because I get annoyed when it tells me it's spelled wrong. And if you want to delete one, all you need to do is just click on the trash can and OK. My third tip is to use bookmarks. Now this one is a little, uh, a little weird, but there is a functionality that I have figured out how to use. So this is especially good if you are trying to uh, like research or like pinpoint different scenes in your book. How you do this, thank you for updating that. <laughs> um, how you do this is let's say I have horse one and I'm going to scroll down here to another page and horse one as well. And I'm gonna create a bookmark. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to go to insert bookmark. And you'll see it, it makes this little banner icon kind of like the save thing you would do on social media. And then I'm gonna scroll up here to the horse one up here and I'm going to select it 
and then click add a link and then I'm gonna click course one here and when I click on this it's gonna bring up my bookmarks and then I can automatically click on that and it's gonna jump down to that section so this is something I've recently learned how to do, but since I am notorious for losing horses and I made the mistake of naming my horses and leaving them at different chapters with different people, uh, this helps me kind of figure out where the last scene was that I had Nightwind or Grey Moon or any of my other horses at. So it's very handy for kind of figuring out where you are without having to like scroll through and skim where you're at. And then to remove them, all you do is you would just click on the bookmark and you would click the remove the trash can icon and it will keep your link in there. So you will just have to break that link and remove the link. My next tip is going to be to use the tasks panel. And this is basically like a digital to-do list, which I don't feel like most people use this. So over here on the right, you can see as I hover my mouse over, it says tasks. I'm gonna open this up and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a task and you can see I was already testing this. So I'm gonna add a task and let's say my task is I want to add a scene at the beginning of chapter five. I can spell, I promise. Um, beginning of chapter five. Um, you can also see I wanna rename one of my characters. Um, I also wanna check dialogue tags um, with smiled because that's something my editor tells me I did way too much on this last book. This is a good way to, it's a good way to keep track of stuff that's in your comments because it stays in the side panel instead of having to scroll through and find your comments, your open comments. So when you're done, all you do is click mark complete and it goes away and you can close this panel and it's gonna stay in there. My final tip is gonna be to use plugins. There are many different plugins that you can use for Google Docs that helps expand the functionality. And I'm gonna show you one really cool one, but only one, because my next video is about plugins. So I'm going to go into extensions and I'm gonna to go to read aloud TTS. I'm gonna open the sidebar here and I'm going to select the first paragraph. Wait for it. The shadows had returned. After nearly a week, Phantom Star and five of the older shadows entered the gardens. Their faces and hands were covered with dirt, and blood stained their clothes. If you are interested in more plugins though, I have another video where I go over 10 plugins that'll help you edit and write your book in Google Docs. So if you're interested, check that one out, and I will catch you in the next video.